Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today's live event, we are going to be talking about our OTDR-1000. Um, before I get started on that, um, I am Ed Cerbona, Senior Director of Engineering here at Jonar Tools, and with me today, I have one of our product engineers, Michael DiGirolamo, okay? Uh, as usual, I have Brenda with me, and I have Mike running uh, the production here, and he will be keeping us in line, so you might be hearing uh, him interact with us. Um, another thing, please take a moment to like our Facebook page. Go to jonard.com forward slash live to enter a contest to win our BP-100 backpack, which we have right here, just so you could see. All right, and with that, uh, what I'm going to do today is turn the demonstration over to Michael. Michael, go for it. All right, thank you, Ed. So what I got here is the OTDR 1000, which is one of the latest products that we've come out with. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, OTDR stands for Optical Time Domain Reflectometer, which is basically just a fancy way to say that this is a testing device that can measure the length of a fiber optic cable and it'll tell you any events that occur, such as uh, reflective or non-reflective events, which I'll get into later. Um, this is also a multifunction device, which has an included power meter, VFL, light source, and network testing equipment, um, which I'll also get into a little bit later. Um, so, to get started, I'll just go through each of the modules um, that is included with the OTDR 1000. Um, so the first we have the OTDR module up here. Um, sorry. And this is where you go and test the, <clears throat> do OTDR testing for a fiber optic cable. So the first thing that you want to do when you do an OTDR test is you're going to need a launch cable, which I have here. Uh, you're going to need your, the fiber optic cable that you're testing, which is also here. And before you plug anything in, the first thing that you always want to do is you want to clean your connectors, just so there's no interference with the test equipment or testing procedure. All right. Sorry, there we go. And I'll just take this out. All right. So now that it's all clean, uh, we can hook this up. So the OTDR 1000 is only for single mode fiber optic cables. Uh, it won't be able to test any multi-mode cables. All right, so now we have our connection all set up. So <clears throat> the next thing that you want to do is you want to go into your settings. So you can just hit the F1 button. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, the OTDR 1000, uh, the OTDR module is only for single mode uh, fiber optic cables. Uh, therefore, it'll only be able to run 1310 and 1550 nanometer wavelengths. There are also three different modes that you can use to do an OTDR test. The first one is the auto test mode, which uh, <clears throat> means that the OTDR 1000 will calculate the length of the fiber optic cable and adjust the settings uh, to meet the demands of the cable that you're testing. The next is a real test, which is a live OTDR test which, you know, if you have a guy that's splicing out in the field or is inspecting the cable, you can see how the fiber reacts to whatever he's doing, such as fusion splicing or if he's bending the cable or if there's any other events that are occurring. The last is an average test mode. So this is used when the auto test mode um, isn't working for you. So basically you want to use the the average test mode, if you have, say, a, a two kilometer 
long fiber optic cable that you're testing, but the OTDR1000 only sees up to 1,000 feet because there's a break in the fiber optic cable. So you would go into the average test mode and you can set your range to two kilometers. Um, so, but for now, we're just going to do the auto test mode. And once you have your settings set up, I mean, there's other settings, there's average time, event loss threshold, and return loss threshold, which we'll get into uh, in a video that's coming soon. You can also check the instruction manual for more details. So once you have your settings set up, you press the F1 button again to start the test. It'll just take a few seconds to, yeah give some results here. So as you can see, there are two results that have, I mean, two uh, events that have occurred. So one is a reflective event and one is an end event. Um, so what this means is uh, the reflective event is just showing the connection between the launch cable and the fiber cable that we're testing. Um, and the end event just shows that, yeah, this is the end of the fiber optic cable. And if you want to get a closer look, you can just change to the cursor. And we can zoom in here on this event. So here you can see in much greater detail what's going on. Here we have the reflective event at the connector, which is at 1.01 kilometers. And the end event, which occurs at 1.02 kilometers, which makes sense because this is a 10 meter long cable and this is a one kilometer launch cable. If you want to get a more graphical view, you can also uh, view this file in the event mode or the event viewer module, or you can run the test again. Um, for now, I'm just going to load the file that I've saved here. And here you can see the connector at 1.01 kilometers. And you can see the end of the fiber optic cable at 1.02 kilometers. Um, so that, that's just a brief overview of the OTDR module. Um, again, we're coming out with a video shortly that will go into uh, more details on these and the instruction manual has more details um, telling you which each of the settings does and um, the different configurations that you can set up. Um, so the next module that we have is the OPM module which is uh, the optical power meter module. So this is the this has the same specifications as our FPM 50A uh, optical power meter where it reads from minus 50 dBm to plus 26 dBm, and it can do single mode or multi-mode wavelengths of 850 nanometers to 1650 nanometers. It also comes with a VFO module, which just acts like any visual fault locator, as you can see. Um, so this is just the normal mode. It's also one hertz pulse mode and two hertz pulse modes. It's um, just pretty nifty to have in there. All right, this also comes with a laser source. So same as our FLS-50, where <clears throat> it can be used for single mode fibers if you want a laser source of 1310 or 1550 nanometers. Next, it has two modules for network cables. So the first is a length and tracker module. So the tracker part is going to tone down uh, the network cable, and you can use a separate probe, such as our TEP100 or TEP200, to actually trace the cable. It also has a TDR built in for length testing, which I'll show you now. Plug one of the of the network cable in, and you hit that F1 button, start test. So this will just detect the length of the network cable, 
And it also tell you if there's any shorted uh, connections within the cable. So here, as you can see, all the ports are open, which is good. Uh, if anything was shorted, it will just have a red short button displayed there. <clears throat> and on the right side, you can see the cable is 4.3 meters long. Um, so this is just a very useful module. And then the last module that we have, the RJ45 sequence module. So for this, plug it into the network cable port on the side. And the OTDR1000 actually has a built-in RJ45 remote. And that's where you plug in the other end of the network cable, like so. So once you have both of those connected, you press the press button. And this cable that I've just connected is a bad cable. Um, as you can see, the ports are misaligned. Port 1 is connected to port 3. Port 2 is connected to port 6. And ports 5 to 7 are all shorted. So you know that this is a bad network cable. Um, other than that, uh, just extra additional system settings that you can change if you need to. Um, but that's just a basic overview of the OTDR 1000. Um, now All right. Ed is coming back. Excellent. So. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. Yeah, Any no questions? Brenda? You're going to field the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what is a yeah. yeah? So what is a reflective event? So a reflective event is just an event that occurs along the fiber optic cable in OTDR testing, where there's either a connector or there's the end of the cable, um, or there's a mechanical splice. Okay, what classifies as a non-reflective event? So non-reflective events are when there's a bend in the fiber optic cable um, or there's a fusion splice in the fiber optic cable. And for those, you'll probably need to adjust the uh, pulse settings to see in greater detail. What is the optimum pulse width for everything? What is the optimum pulse width for everything? There is no optimal pulse width for everything. There are different uh, pulse settings that you should use. Um, for non-reflective events or for shorter cables, you should uh, have a shorter pulse width. And for longer cables that you're seeing, uh, you should increase the pulse width so that you can get a, a greater view of the cable and the events that occur within it. And what is the average uh, range? What is the average range? So. The OTDR 1000 can go, it can detect fiber from 500 meters to 64 kilometers. So anything in between there is okay. And then the, uh, is there internal storage and how much does it hold? Uh, is there, yeah, is there internal storage and how much can it hold? So the internal storage is 25 megabytes, which might seem small, but it can save up to 750 test results. And for additional storage, there is a, an SD or TF card slot where you can put in a micro SD card and you can give yourself some additional storage. Is there a charge for the software? Uh, the software is free. It's, oh, sorry. Is there a charge for the software? No. The software is completely free. Um, it also comes with some PC software so you can view the test results on your PC. Um, yeah. And these will be up on the website, so they'll be able to, to download it um, instead yeah. of taking off a disk provided. Last number, is there a license fee for software? Then we have one before the eight. Is there a license fee for the software? No, there's no licensing fee, no nothing. Just once you get the unit, you get everything. It's all included. How do you calibrate it? Um, well, there are a bunch of different settings. I could show you very briefly. Um, so if you want to go and calibrate this, I mean, you could just change the settings here. 
you need it calibrated, uh, you'd have to probably send it to us. Uh, yes, you can export the OTDR results in SOR format, and no, you cannot save the results of the sequencing. Are test results saved in native SOR format? Yes. Okay. Are, are the files saved in SOR format? Yes. All the OTDR uh, files are saved in SOR format. No, no, this does not have any Bluetooth capabilities. How much is the How much is the How much is the OTDR 1000? Um, I'll let Wayne answer that. You can jump <laughs> online and answer that question. How's that? Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the, the question. It was the dynamic range. Well, if, if our, total, our total range is up to 64 kilometers, I, I, so I think when they're saying dynamics, the actual, what is uh, the typical range you're running in. So yeah, it can run from zero to 64 kilometers. Okay, no, so you can actually just directly connect this to your PC, sorry. You can directly connect the OTDR1000 directly to your PC via the micro USB port on the side of it. Um, so you don't have to take out the SD card or do any of the nonsense. You can just plug it in and then you can view the files directly on your computer. So far it looks like that is it. Okay. So if that's it, then uh, let me finish up by repeating. Please take a moment to like our Facebook page. Go to jonar.com forward slash live to enter our contest to win our BP-100 backpack. And if that is it, um, thank you everyone for watching. Please stay safe.